Today we will see different uh, deep networks architectures. But let's start with the notion of convolution, which is quite common in image processing. So when we are doing a convolution, we are doing in fact the product of two functions on the same domain. So it is illustrated here, this is the general formulation with an integral. So we are doing the integral of t from minus infinity to plus infinity of function f x minus t over gt. So basically we have the function f that is kind of convolve over the function g, which is fixed at some places. So the, the fact that we have these t variables that is integrated from minus infinity to plus infinity is basically like if we are applying the function f over all the domain t, uh, and which is multiplied with g at these different positions. And, and the discrete formulation is that one. So basically we are summing it from all positions over domain t from minus infinity to plus infinity. So if it is discrete, it is a, a given fixed amount of values of t to use here to that can be used to compute this convolution in, in one dimension here of the function f over function g. So how it looks in practice, let's say that we have here a function f that is this uh, green box and we have the function g which is this red box. We are, we are convolving, so we will slide the box of function f over the function g and we will compute the intersection of these two. So this is how we are making the multiplication of it. So basically here at that position, uh, the box is centered at the middle of the, the f function is centered at the middle of the box. And uh, so we have g that is centered on zero and f that is moving along the way. So here there is no overlap, there is no value. So if we move it here, we see that, you know, at, at starting at minus one, this is the point where when the green box is centered on minus one, we start to get overlaps between the green and the red box. So the values start to increase. And now at that position where we are centered here, this is the center of the green box, we've got this overlap and that corresponds to the value represented here as the result of the convolution. So we go on, we move along the function here. So now we see that the peak is at when the box, when the function f is centered on zero. This is where we have perfect overlaps uh, perfect overlap between uh, f and g. So this is where the multiplication is maximum, give us one. And now we are continuing to slide the window, slide the function f and then this is decreasing as the overlap is, is getting smaller and smaller until the end. And now we've got that the, the convolution of this function f as a box over this function g as another box is a triangle function that goes from minus one to plus one with a peak at zero here. The peak of, where on the y-axis, the peak is at value of one. Uh, we also have the notion of off-center direct distributions, which are basically uh, specific functions, uh, interesting mathematical tools. Uh, the direct uh, function is simply giving us as value my plus infinity when x is equal exactly to t and zero otherwise. So basically it's really a, a really narrow, a really infinitely narrow and infinitely high function, uh, but overall it integrates to one. So basically if we are making the integral of the, the, the direct function over x, all this integrate to one. So the area of that function is one. Uh, and the point is that when we are convolving uh, uh, Dirac's with f functions, we, we have as a result directly that f of x convolved with Dirac x minus u is equal to f of x minus u. That's a, a way to put things in place. And, and you know, this is, I'm presenting this because somehow uh, when we are doing kernel density estimation, we are doing some kind of convolution. So we are convolving kernels. So with kernel density estimation, we are convolving kernel with Dirac's position center on the data. So basically, uh, whatever kernel we use, we are kind of putting the kernel on each function, on each uh, sorry, on each data points that we have in our training set. And that gives us the kernel density estimation. So it's basically like if we add a direct, fun a direct function over each data points that we are using for making the kernel density estimation. So in, in terms of equation, it translates to that. So basically this is the usual equation of kernel density estimation, which we can rewrite that way. So it's it's kind of similar with the difference that we are k of x over h convolved with a direct function of x minus x power t, x in the index t. 
So this is the, these are the mathematical uh, I would say tools or formulation based on convolution. But what we care today is really about image processing, where two D convolutions are really a basic uh, building blocks for image processing. So this is widely used as a way to do image processing in the spatial domain directly. So it, what it looks like, you know, we have an image. An image is basically in grayscale, we, we are basically dealing with a matrix of values. Each values tell us the intensity of each pixel. Uh, with color images, we have in fact three values, RGB, but with grayscale, it's only one value. So if we are convolving in 2D, some kind of filter here, we have a three by three filter, which is our convolution filter. And we are going all over the, the image. So we have different values basically. Uh, for every pixel of the original image, except the one on the border where we may or may not have something computed there. But for this example here, our filter is really centered on the six here. So we, the, the six is, is centered. So we have this, uh, we have the convolution filter apply on that, on that region. And what it does is basically multiplying every element in the three by three window around this pixel with the values in the convolution filter. So we've got three, multiply by minus one here, plus two multiplied by minus two, so it's minus four, so minus three, minus four, minus seven overall, two times minus one, so it's minus two. So it gave us like first values. Here we have the same things for this, but it's multiplied by zero, six by zero, four by zero. So the middle column is kind of, of the filter disable all these values. And on the right column here, the next column, we have one times one plus two times two plus one times one. So basically it gives as results, the sum of the product of every elements multiply times the other elements multiply and so on. It gave us as results minus three, which is the result of the application of the convolution filter in that area for, uh, and the results is minus three, that pixel that corresponds on the same pixels on where we were centered uh, to start with. So this is an example of uh, 2D convolution, and we do this over all the pixels of the image to get the new values here in the destination image, which is the result of the application of the convolution filter over all the image. So uh, we can do this uh, for different things. You know, uh, a basic convolution filter is the identity filter. In three by three, looks like that. Basically, we have a one in the middle and zero everywhere. It just copy the image as is, so there is no changes. It's really the original image we have here unchanged by the application of that filter. Then we also have Gaussian blur. Gaussian blur is, is uh, that kind of filter. So basically we have values, which is like high values in the middle, but I would say lower values on the four direction, north, south, east, east, west, and on the diagonal, even lower values. So it's four to one, but all of this is divided by 16. So we got all these values divided by 16 and the sum is equal to one basically. And when we apply such a uh, filter, we've got a blur image. So it's basically a Gaussian blur here that uh, represents a blurred version of the original image. This, this makes sense. We have also edge detector, detection filters like this one, which allow us to really get the, the, the pixels where there is a, an abrupt change or a bigger change in terms of intensity in the neighborhood. So this uh, edge detector is minus one in all neighbors and plus eight in the middle one. And so if we apply this over the image here, we've got this kind of edge detection image that's basically highlighting the different edges that we see. So the pixels or the regions where we have sharp changes. And if we are sharpening the image, we've got this kind of filter, which is basically five in the middle and minus one all around. So this one will modify the original image for that thing. It will sharpen somehow the, the, the edges, making more prominent, but still keeping, I would say, the, the general aspect and picture of the image here. Uh, there is, I would say, a classic filter for edge detection, which is called the symbol operator. It is really one of the most known and was widely used for processing images. What it does, it compute local gradients uh, for in the image intensity. So it is made of two convolutions. So basically we have the, the GX, which is computing the vertical gradient and uh, GY, which is computing the, the horizontal gradient. So it looks like this. So we have the GX, which is the that filter here, plus one, plus two, plus one, zero, 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 minus one, minus two, minus one. 
uh, which is convolved on A, which is the image of interest and give us GX. So likewise, we have the horizontal gradient, which has this filter, which is the version, but horizontal from the previous one uh, with this filter apply on the image, give us GY. And then we combine these two by having GX square plus GY square, square root of all of this, that gave us the final results. That is the results of the Sobol operator. If we look at, for an example, we have this image here. So which is kind of machine with several edges. And if we apply Sobel on that one, we've got this kind of result, which is really highlighting the edges in that image quite well. So we have the, all the, the edges are in white uh, over the image and we see several other elements that are still uh, perceivable, but uh, in a dimmer way, we are we have much more focus on getting the edge extracted there. 